Well, welcome to Fidelity Soundbites, a straight to the point monthly podcast where some of Australia's leading portfolio managers will share with you what's happening in markets, how they're positioning their portfolios and the outlook ahead. I'm your host, Andrew Dowling. And once again, James Abella joins us as we look back on the February reporting season. How did mid and small caps perform and what's the latest news? Thank you, James, for joining us. Thank you, Andrew. James, so how are you feeling? Um, always a, a, it's a big month. Uh, there's uh, always lots of news, lots of uh, uh, obviously meetings that you guys have with companies. How did, how did the markets perform over the month, particularly on the, the mid and small cap front for yourself? And uh, did reporting season go as expected? It was, it's always a very, very busy month. Uh, I call it the tsunami of information during February and reporting season. Um, and the tsunami definitely did come in and came in hard. It was a bit of a softer month for the market. Um, market had a lot to worry about, a lot to absorb. Um, so there's still all those things that the market was worrying about were kind of confirmed in the reporting period. So inflation was there, cost pressures were there, consumer weakness was there. And I feel like the market really wants to be positive. It wants to be hopeful. Where there was good results, where there was earnings growth and earnings certainty, the market rewarded it. Um, but when there wasn't, the market really punished it. So stocks like Domino's and Downer, uh, where there's real disappointment, uh, they were down over 30%. Um, a downer had a big downer. Yeah, big, mm-hmm. yes, big downer. Uh, confidence was really, I guess, softening. Recession fears are still there now. So, yeah, January was really positive. Everything was very up. Uh, markets were up. Confidence was up. Uh, but February was much more sort of reality bites month, and that's what really happened. So it was much, much weaker. Um, and, yeah, consumers, I think, are really starting to feel the pinch now. So, yeah, just an anecdote, I went, went to, to Aldi uh, on the weekend and it was packed. I mean, it, they're very busy when everyone can find a bargain or find a, a discount offer, um, even lining up a petrol around the airport. There was a line of about 30 or 40 cars lining up. For petrol was about 10 to 20 percent cheaper than sort of normal. Um, so, this it, it is really hurting and I think consumers are feeling it and you saw it in the results. It's right across the board. And... Look, and to that point, um, you know, if we think back to the last reporting season, you know, the RBA cash rate was 1.85. It's now doubled, as you mentioned earlier. It's a huge impact, right, on, on households across the board. Uh, you know, Paul and I were discussing earlier how, uh, you know, some households have gone from a feeling like they're living to existing. Mm. Um, it's, it's a big, uh, big impact across the board, whereas depending on... Um, you know, if you've got term deposits out there, you've seen a massive increase in the income you generate from those. So how do you then think about that uh, in terms of your portfolio, the companies, uh, what have you observed from reporting season? And, uh, you know, how does that then play out as to um, you know, what, what you uh, then decide across any portfolio changes, if that's, if that's relevant? Yeah, I didn't actually make huge portfolio changes during February, but the reality of a cost of living crisis, I guess Australia was quite late to the cycle. Uh, London and Europe really felt it straight from when the when the gas price lifted from the Ukraine war, uh, was we were quite late. We're really only feeling it because of because of interest rates and, and, and housing and so much debt in our country. Uh, so really we have been delayed. So we are really behind the EU, the UK, um, and somewhere also behind the US. So when you think about a, a, a portfolio, really pricing power is really what you need to focus on. Can you reprice your product, reprice your service for that increase in costs, increase in inflation, increase in cost of capital. All these are going upward right now. And if you can't price, you are getting a margin squeeze. Um, and then also the competition is also increasing as well. Because of that reason, the, the intensity around margin trying to maintain margins just becomes more focused and I think that's what you really need to focus on so market structures and pricing power is really really important Um, and wages are also coming up there's a lot of talk of turnover there's a lot of talk of labor being very tight still um, which means if you have very high turnover productivity falls so you know there are knock-on effects um, and that's I think where you know, where you really need to be focused. On the other side of that is uh, is really the value rally has started to wane now. That was huge during, I guess, six or seven months of the end of last year. And that has now started to wane because if companies don't have the earnings growth to justify the valuations, they're not just running because it's a value rally. They need to be running on uh, earnings, earnings and certainty. And that's what you really need to be providing. So that's where the quality stocks did pretty well um, in this reporting season. Mm. And just on that, uh, you know, sort of, in the context of your um, 
QMTV process, quality momentum transition value. Uh, you know, certainly since the inception of the strategy nearly 10 years ago, you've had different quadrants that have been at different extreme points. Anything uh, at the extreme at this point, either in a positive or negative direction when it comes to those quadrants? Yeah, it's, it's, it, look, it's very interesting now. Quality has, is now pushing to 45%, so it's heading towards sort of maximum 50% of the portfolio. Uh, if you roll back six months ago, that was at 40 because evaluations were incredibly high. Now it's moved back as we've moved into good results. They've got good earnings. They've got good certainty of top back into quality. So it's sitting around that 45, actually 46 level um, where the model is around 40. Value is still at around 12 to 15%. So it's still quite high. Momentum is the extreme. So momentum is absolute minimum 20%. And it's only choosing those stocks in momentum where there is good cyclical certainty, good cyclical growth. And the valuations are quite reasonable. So there's none of that. All of those sort of momentum parties or bubbles that were happening over the last few years in terms of e-commerce or buy now, pay later, or all those momentum clusters have really, really shrunk or disappeared. Um, so I don't own, I didn't own any of those sort of through the cycle, through that big bubble uh, period. But now there is not a lot of momentum in the marketplace. So in terms of weights, that's really where we are. Transition's quite high. So transition and quality is about a third. Momentum's quite low and quality is nearly a half. So we've gone from momentum to no momentum in some respects. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> There's really, really no momentum. And that's a very, uh, you know, comical but very topical thought process right now because there is no real momentum rally in the marketplace. <laughs> Money is expensive. Everything is expensive because of inflation and cost of capital. So the hurdles now are much higher for everything. So you can't just be a cool stock in a cool theme and rallying at five or 10 times price to book or 10 times price to sales. You need to be giving the market earnings and certainty. And if you can't do that, you know, you don't have any price momentum or holding evaluation right now. And, and one of those very big, to your point, I mentioned earlier, one of those very big um, momentum clusters was the uh, the buy now, pay later sector. Um, has that now become more like buy now, pray later? Is it uh, is it challenged in, in uh, what, what does that model look like as, as we move forward with the cost of money being uh, a real cost of money versus a, a limited cost of money? Yeah, well, what's, what's caught, caught up, up with, with those three, that, that that sort of stock concept is really three things. So one is the cost of money has gone up a lot, so the hurdle is much higher. That is affecting their funding costs. Um, and then also the second part of it is valuations are a lot tougher. You need to provide, as I said, earnings and certainty. And those stocks often were not providing any earnings or certainty. Um, so that's also caught up with them. And then thirdly is just really the attitude towards risk has changed very dramatically and the attitude towards momentum and themes has changed very dramatically. So there's nothing really in their favour. And finally, to wrap all that up is regulation has now come in and regulation is now a lot more focused on classifying these things as credit, whereas before they weren't. They could uh, work around those um, regulations and now they're being brought into the fold, which was talked about two years ago but didn't end up happening but now it's much you know more advanced and it's a bigger part of the market and then the, the regulators are now moving moving towards it so um it's become a much more challenged environment for that whole sector yeah so more like giving credit where credit's due as opposed to uh, where we were um uh, a couple of years ago. correct years. and credit is no longer free i guess because money is no longer free so it all sort of feeds on itself um and then, and then, like I said, it, it's re reality bites in many respects for the market at the moment, and that is definitely one area where reality has bitten. Yeah, and just um, in terms of um, where we landed with reporting season, uh, certainly some fairly material reactions across the board. Uh, did it just sort of feel that was pretty much on in line with? Uh, what you expected or was there any sort of major surprises? That, um... The really good results were in um, sort of technology space. So Ultium, WiseTech, for example, they had strong rallies into the result. They're on high valuation, so they didn't move very much, but they did recover their losses or volatility, so they've held their ground quite well. So Ultium and WiseTech did well. Hub and um, NetWealth also did well, so in fintech. So those two also did well. So technology was quite strong. The other area was travel, so COVID recovery themes. So Flight Centre and Auckland Airport both had good results, and that was quite positive. And financials as well, so insurance brokers and insurance sector overall has also done quite well. So those three were really positive. 
Um, the negatives, I think, were where they they were expected um, in terms of consumer was quite weak. E-commerce was very weak. Um, and then you had the yeah, significant negative surprises from um, companies like Domino's and, and Downer, which, again, outlooks are weaker. Management changes in Downer. It creates fear and uncertainty in the market. So if, like I said, if you can't provide that certainty, especially in this market, stocks are being really, really sold off. So that's where that you know that that occurred uh, but generally if you you your quality business and you're very stable and you gave the market a good feel of confidence you've done quite well and that's what really happened in those three areas of, of tech insurance um and the covid recovery travel plays mm. so the value of certainty has never been higher in many respects I, I yeah i completely agree that's the big thing the cost of money has gone up but now the value of certainty has come up which is where generally quality and transition do well because they have positive catalysts they have um, outlooks, they have milestones, they have sort of the visibility of the market is there. Whereas momentum and value tend, uh, momentum and value tends to work on greed and fear. So when the market's very greedy, momentum really works. When the market's very scared, value really works. But in this axis of quality and transition, um, the market's very idiosyncratic, very stock specific. Stock stock picking really really matters. Um, and it's yeah, it, it's much more idiosyncratic to those stocks. So that's where now that is really where the market where we are, where quality and transition is. It's a sector that really really working. Mm. And just finally, uh, as opposed to picking stocks, if you had to pick a song uh, that you feel <laughs> sums up the February reporting season, um, what would it be, James? It'd certainly be. I went to the Harry Styles concert with my family on the weekend, and it was it was a phenomenal concert. And certainly, that song, as it was, really rung true in my head in terms of where we are in the market right now. Um, and he says in the song, "We will never be as it was," and that is really, I guess, the psyche of the market right now. We we had money, you know, only a few years ago, which was free. Um, risk tolerance was really high. The cost of risk was really low. Spreads were incredibly low. Um, Everything was very, you know, easy, um, and at the moment, it's it's almost the opposite. It's not as it was. That w- that was the past, and now we have reality bites from inflation, travel uh, costs in terms of uh, fuel, labour costs are higher, cost of capital as in interest rates are higher, competition is higher, more aggressive, consumers are weak, um, business confidence is you know kind of there, but it's not really strong. Um, so I think yeah, we're definitely um, the environment is not as it was. And that for me, that Harry Styles song really, really sums it up really well at the moment. So, so from as it was to it is what it is, uh, on that note, uh, we'll conclude the um, the episode today. Thank you once again great. for Thank sharing you. your insights and observations, James. Uh, great to, to, to see you again. And uh, if you have enjoyed uh, this episode, please share it with a friend and uh, colleagues and uh, subscribe to your uh, favourite streaming platform for this podcast. And we look forward to having you join us next time. Thank you. Thank you. Some important information on today's podcast. This podcast is issued by Phil Responsible Entity Australia Limited, AFSL number 409340. This podcast is intended as general information only and has been prepared without taking into account any person's objectives, financial situation or needs. You should consider the product disclosure statement and target market determinations for Fidelity Australia products at fidelity.com.au. Please click the link in the show's description to read the full disclaimer.